Hello, boys and girls. So recently, I had this happen to me. That seems unlikely. We're at not even 70 pounds of compression. Why is it so low? So what I was doing was trying to get a compression reading um, on a clamshell saw setup while it was locked into my, my vise so that I didn't have to put the damn chainsaw all the way back together just so that I could use the recoil starter. And, well, I already know more than you know because I've already done this test. So my point is, is clearly something went wrong. Or at least that's what I thought. And so I decided I would test it out on a chainsaw that has known good compression. So these are what I found out. Where? There we go. That'll do it. So this is my FCO 165. Now this chainsaw has kind of sort of been ported. Not really. It's a long story. I did all the porting on the piston. Uh, so it has a different piston in, in it than what would normally come stock. So anyways, none of that matters. Here we go. Let's do a compression test the way that I normally do it. Before you correct me on this, it doesn't matter. I know that you think that it does, but it does not. All right, 10 pulls. That's what I do. Does it require 10 pulls? Not really, but I wanna make sure I have a completely maxed out reading. All right, so let's see what we got there. I'm showing about 165. Can you guys see that? Let me make sure that you can see it. There we go. So we have good compression. Now, same saw. In order to get a good spin on this, you might have to remove the recoil, the starter cover. Why? Well, because if you spin the, if you spin the, um, if you spin the clutch in a direction like forward, the direction that, uh, the same direction that we pulled in, the direction that the engine runs in, if you pull it in that direction, you could loosen up the clutch. Um, but if you spin it backwards, you're gonna catch, or yeah, you might catch on the uh, recoil starter. You probably are going to catch. Depending on what kind of chainsaw you use, I believe a steel would not catch uh, but most chainsaws, the starter paws would catch. So we're going to just go ahead and eliminate that right off the bat, especially because I want to spin it both directions so that you guys can say, <laughs> which is what you normally sound like to me. All right, there we go. So... Let's spin it in reverse, because that's the way that I was spinning it whenever I had it set up in the vise. Okay, here we go, reverse. Oh, look at that. We have, ooh, I gotta come around there. Hundred and thirty pounds of compression. What gives? Well, here's the deal. I know that most of you guys would say, 
are, I, I feel like most of you guys would say, you can't spin it backwards. It won't build pressure if you spin it backwards. That is complete bullshit. This engine doesn't care which way the uh, crank shaft is rotating. All it knows is that piston goes up and that piston goes down. That's it. So it doesn't matter which direction that crank uh, crankshaft turns. It's gonna build pressure exactly the same. So now here we go. I switched my drill around. Now I'm spinning it forward. I want you to be able to, can you see? Probably hard to make stuff out on camera. But here we go, we're spinning it forward now. The clutch might come off, but I doubt it because this thing's been in use a good bit. I would have to lock that piston down to break the clutch loose. Ah, even less. Look at that. Barely over 120 pounds of compression. So, riddle me this. How is it that we have a known good compression saw? Not just good compression, high compression, okay? This was about 165 pounds of compression. That is really good, reasonable compression for, for a high performance motor. You know, I mean, that's, that's way more than it would have been from factory. Um, but we take it and the, we use the pull, or pull start, the recoil assembly, and we get our 165 pounds of compression which is completely reasonable because we have pull started this thing several times and we know that it has very good compression, all right? But whenever we do the exact same thing with the drill, all we're doing is spinning that crankshaft. <laughs> we get about 40 PSI less. Why? Why? Why are we getting 40 PSI less than if we used the recoil starter? And now this video is gonna suck for a lot of you guys, I think anyways, because I have no answer for you. Um, I have done this over and over and over because I was testing out all kinds of stuff for my uh, MS, 390 or 039 uh, project that I'm working on. I have this piston that I made, which has a very large dome and it generates a lot of compression. And here I am, I'm getting readings of 120 and I'm rotating it by hand. I'm like, Ugh. I'm like, I don't get it. This thing's got a lot of compression. Why am I only getting 120 pounds of compression? Well, the answer, now that I've done this test, is nonsensical, if you ask me, but very simple in nature. The answer is, whenever I was doing that test, I was utilizing a drill to turn the engine over, and whenever you utilize a drill to turn the engine over, you do not get an accurate pressure reading. I don't know why. Now, I would love to know why. I would love to know why, but I don't. So if anybody out there knows why the pressure readings are different, I've had thought about all kinds of stuff. Like with this thing, there's a clamshell setup, and I was going, well, maybe the crank is moving and it's releasing some of the pressure you know, from that hard jarring gung, 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 that the drill is doing. But then I go on this right here. This is a magnesium case set up, not a clamshell. Um, it's just not going to break loose like that. And, you know, I thought, well, maybe I don't have the seal. I don't have the goop here and I was getting an air leak there somehow. It don't matter. None of that shit matters. Uh, at first, whenever I was doing this, I had no crank seals. 
And I thought maybe that was the problem. I put crank seals on and it didn't change anything. And so I was still getting exactly the same reading. So any... I'm interested to hear any thoughts that you have. Just understand whenever you're having these thoughts, I probably already had them. So what I'm hoping to reach out there is someone that has the actual answer. Um, but at the same time, I'll read your thoughts as well. So I don't want to discourage anybody from throwing something out there. Um, but, you know, I mean, I just, I've racked my brains over it. This has been, I think four days has passed since I originally found this. And uh, I just don't have a clue why it would not properly build pressure. I tried going slow. I went fast. Nothing changed. I always got the same very inconsistent readings. Uh, the needle bounce, it, needle would bounce around all over the place. Um, I stabilized this. I let it hang free. I did everything that I could think of to do, and nothing has told me why. <laughs> it is completely nonsensical. And I've racked my brains over it. And so much, it, it has screwed up my whole video series. <laughs> because I was trying to find the answers myself. And if, if I couldn't find the answers, I couldn't give the answers to you guys. So I was doing all kinds of tests for compression with um, the pop-up pistons for these cylinders. Uh piston that I made for these cylinders. And so the whole series is average dude mods. And so I was trying to show things in an orderly fashion for the average dude. And because of this, I have to skip an entire section <laughs> and go right to the non-average dude. I made this piston work. Um, Anyways, it's got me kind of bummed out. I mean, not, not like bummed, bummed, but I'm like, man, disappointed because the series was going so well and now it got kind of foobarred. And um, <sighs> basically I have the choice of A, running it with the uh, pop-up piston, knowing then I'm tearing it down again to put the better piston that I made in there. Um, the only reason I would put the pop-up piston in there is just to showcase what the average dude would get. But ultimately, I'm building the 039 to be fast and win a race, right? And so I'm clearly going to use this piston, which is going to produce a lot more compression uh, and... I need it drastically because the cylinder that I am using, yeah, this is the one, has a 95.6 degree exhaust roof. So this ain't gonna cut the mustard. I need to jump right to this one. So I was wanting to showcase everything just through showing the compression. And I can't do it because I'm not getting an accurate reading by spinning it with a drill. The only way to get an accurate reading, as I have found so painstakingly, is to actually have the saw assembled so that I could I can pull it. And uh, with a regular chainsaw, I would just assemble it just good enough to where I could use the recoil starter. But it's a freaking it's one of these. And to assemble it well, you just can't partially assemble it. I mean, anyways, I'm a little pissed about it. But, yeah, if anybody knows why a drill 
does not suffice when getting a compression test, let me know. Because it's downright disappointing. But since we're on the topic, this piston, which is the piston for a 100cc bicycle motor, one of those motors that you attach to a bicycle, um, it still has the small 10 millimeter wrist pin and it is 49 millimeters. And I did a bunch of cutting on it and it works. It goes right in. And my gestualization is that this thing is probably going to produce around 160 PSI, even with a 95 degree exhaust roof. Uh, the exhaust roof will probably jump up to 97 because the, the piston's taller. So, um, which means it should run good. It should run, should make for a fast saw. Um, but yeah. There you go. If anything else I have to say at this point is just yapping to yap and... Well, I do a lot of that. That's kind of my, <laughs> that's kind of my MO. <laughs> Anyways, check you later. I hope you guys had a really enjoyable 4th of July weekend.